and this is section 4 of Mastering Cute Programming, which covers controlling multimedia. So let's go ahead and get started with the multimedia capture. In this video, we're going to cover how to capture images, how to capture videos, and finally, how to configure our settings for capture. So let's go ahead and start with our image capture. Now, in this example, we want our users to be able to select the cameras dynamically in the case that our users have multiple cameras. Now, we haven't gotten into memory management very much since we've been leaning on Qt's parent-child ownership model to do this for us. But in this case, since we're dynamically allocating the camera, we're going to have a couple of members that are going to fall outside of the parent-child ownership model. So we're going to use a scope pointer to automatically delete objects for us whenever they go out of scope. And the class that we're going to be using to do this is Q scope pointer. Specifically, we'll be managing the Q camera and the Q image capture this way. So let's go ahead and create those member instances real quick. So our Q camera instance right here controls the camera, the Q image camera, the Q image capture class, or instance is actually the high level image recording class, which translates from the camera into an actual file. And the Q camera viewfinder here is going to go ahead and display whatever our Q camera sees for us so that we know what we're taking a picture of. So let's go ahead and switch into the implementation file. And the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and create our view so that our users know what we're taking a picture of. Awesome. So our UI is going to be this actual view, which is going to show what we're taking a picture of and a push button, which we'll use to go ahead and tell when to take the image. So we create this blank Q widget. And if you look at this setup UI function, you can see that we create a layout and add both our camera view and our Q push button to this layout before setting it to this widget. So now that we've got the user interface set up, Let's go ahead and grab all of the cameras so that our users can select them dynamically. So we'll do this using a static method available cameras. Now, the easiest way to give our users an option is to add all of this information up to a menu bar. So our Q main window already has a menu bar built in, so let's grab a reference to it. And then let's go ahead and add a specific menu which we'll call devices to our menu bar. Perfect, so we wanna go ahead and iterate through each one of our Q camera infos that we created as part of this Q list right here. And I'm not gonna to get too much in the code to do this, but basically we go ahead and create a Q action. We set this action to be checkable. We set it to be the actual Q camera info so that every time our user selects this, this is the actual value that'll get passed whenever our user triggers something new. And then we check to see if the camera info that we're iterating through is the default camera. And if it is, we go ahead and set that to be checked. So we set it to be checkable here and then set it to be checked here. And then we go ahead and add each action that we've created as part of this first line to the device menu that we created up here. So the only thing that we're missing from all this code right now is an action group. And an action group will help manage all of our actions for us so that we have a single interface that we can use to actually change things. So let's go ahead and create that now. Perfect. So now that we've got this camera group, which is a Q action group, what we want is every time our user selects a new camera action here, we want that to be passed to our set camera action slot. So let's go ahead and connect the uh, Q action groups triggered signal up to the set camera action slot. Awesome. So we've successfully added the ability for our user to change which camera they want to use with only a couple lines of code. So let's go ahead and scroll back up. Now, the one thing that we didn't do is we haven't actually set any of the cameras. So let's go ahead and set the camera to be the default camera. And our camera info class has a static method called uh, default camera, which we can use to go ahead and set the default camera. So we haven't implemented the set camera slot. So let's go ahead and scroll down and implement that. So the first thing that we're going to want to do in here is actually create a new instance of our camera. Now, remember that these are the um, Q scoped pointer, the Q camera and the uh, Q camera image capture are all wrapped in this Q scope pointer. So the interface is going to look a little bit different, but let's go ahead and create our instance here. 
And then once we've actually created our instance, let's go ahead and set our new image capture and what it the our Q image capture class actually needs a reference to the specific camera. So we're going to pass that in as well. Perfect. So let's make sure that our camera is set for actual image capture real quick. And we can do this using the set capture mode method. And we'll change it to capture still images. And the last thing that we need to do as part of this method is set our viewfinder or reset our viewfinder so that it's capturing the data from this class specifically. So we'll go ahead and do that now using the set viewfinder method. Perfect. So the last thing that we need to do as part of this application is go ahead and wire up our push button. So we've set the camera, we've set up all the camera devices, we've set up the UI. So now whenever we push our Q push button, let's make sure we actually take an image. Now, since we're dynamically resetting the image capture, which is the class that uses to actually save a file here, we're gonna use a functor rather than connecting directly to the instance that's part of this class. Cool, so let's go ahead and run this and take a picture. Looks like I missed a semicolon here. So now let's go ahead and run this and take a picture. Awesome. So you can see we've got our actual viewfinder here and then we've got our push button. And if we click this and then change in here. And look at the most recent one, you can see that we've successfully managed to capture an image. Awesome. So now that we've got pictures working, let's go ahead and record some video. So we'll open the record project here and we'll take a look. Now all the code should look very similar, but the one thing is that instead of using a Q camera image capture, we're going to use a Q media recorder instead. So let's go ahead and create that. Perfect. And then we'll switch to our implementation file and we'll go down to the uh, set camera function or slot here. And we need to actually initialize this Q media recorder just like we did our Q image capture by passing in a reference to the camera. Awesome. Now that the Q media recorder is initialized, let's set up the record and stop recording slots as part of the main window. Remember, we're not going to connect our signals directly to the instance member, which in this case is media recorder, since we're replacing it every time we change the device. So we're going to put the slots on the parent widget instead, which in this case is the main window. So in order to record, the function that we want to call is just record. And in order to stop recording, the function that we want to call is stop. Cool. So let's go ahead and scroll up to the top. You can see that we're creating two Q push buttons. One is called the record button, which has the words record in it. And the other is the stop record. And you can see at the bottom of this class, we're actually connecting those to the slots that we just created. So the click signal gets connected to the record slot and the stop record button click signal gets connected to the stop recording slot. The only thing that we don't have implemented here that's different is we actually want to dynamically change these buttons so that the only ones that are enabled are the things you can do. So example, while we're recording, we don't want our users to be able to hit the record button anymore. And similarly, when we're not recording, we don't want our users to be able to hit the stop recording button. And the slot that we've set up to do this is the update recorder state slot. And you can scroll down and you can see the implementation here. We've got two cases here, the recording state and the stop state. And whenever we are actually recording, we make sure that our users can't select our record button. And similarly, whenever we are not recording, we make sure that our users can't select our stop recording. So let's go ahead and connect up the signal, which is on the Q media recorder instance. And the signal that we want is the actual state change signal. And we'll go ahead and connect that to our slot. Perfect. So we've successfully connected that up. So now every time our Q media recorder state gets changed, we'll be able to update the uh, recorder state in our actual function, which is just going to change the buttons here. And we're just iterating through or switching on an enum, which is the actual Q media recorder state. So the very last thing that we need to do here is we need to check to make sure that we can actually record video on our default camera. 
So if we can, we want to go ahead and set the capture mode to be capture video. And if we can't actually do this, we want to let our users know. Perfect. So let's go ahead and run this and capture some video. So you can see our two buttons here down at the bottom. And if we hit record, we can see that the record actually fades out. And if we hit stop recording, um, we'll have successfully created that. And we can show this is the case by go ahead and opening up this clip, which you can actually see we have managed to successfully record video there. So the one thing that you might not know is you might want to actually change the file format that you're recording in. So right now it's just recording in whatever the default is. So the way to check to see what we've got is there's actually a function on our media recorder and that's the supported audio codecs. So this would actually get you out a string list of everything. And then it, you could, you know, display that to your users and whatever you could have them pick it and have them actually set it as well. And you could either use, you know, you've got supported audio, you've got container format and the encoding settings. So you've got default methods to select each of these and the set methods that'll actually set those. So I would encourage you to play around with those on your own to see what's available on your system. But with that, we've successfully learned how to capture images, how to capture videos, and briefly touched on how to configure images and videos.